Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 16th. Today we're going to talk about Pacific Northwest weather, what you can expect for the next few days. We'll take a look at the extended also. We're also going to take a look at some of the shock waves from this Hunga Tonga eruption out over the Pacific Ocean yesterday that spawned a Pacific wide tsunami as well. So what we're looking at here is infrared satellite imagery highlighting the shock wave moving through the Hunga Tonga eruption out here in the South Pacific. You can see the eruption down here and then you see the shock wave rippling through the atmosphere. This was organized by Michael Gavin, a buddy of mine. He runs The Science Out There a YouTube page. It's very good. Highly recommend it. Check that out. And you can see the first wave as it traveled north hit the Pacific Northwest about 4.30 in the morning yesterday. The second shock wave, or actually the same shock wave just moving around the planet hit the Pacific Northwest at approximately midnight last night. So about a 19 hour difference approximately. Hunga Tonga blast here, first shock wave moves this way for us in the Pacific Northwest. And that shock wave also traveled across the planet this direction and came all the way back to the Pacific Northwest almost 19 hours later. So very interesting. It'll be interesting to see if one of those waves moves back around the planet all the way for a second time. Taking a look at some of the shockwave um, pressure recordings, this is Kyle Gustav's station here, 4.30 a.m. Pacific Northwest, and you can see just about midnight, the second wave hits there. A little bit different signature, a bigger pressure bump with the first wave versus the second, and a bigger pressure drop on the second wave. So interesting stuff there. And you can see here, this kind of marks the pressure wave, the first one as it moves across the country. The red is the ridging, the pressure rise, the blue is the troughing of the wave of, as it moves from west to east across the USA there. And this is just showing that all the stations pretty much picked it up in the Pacific Northwest, all around the globe, stations picked this wave up as it moved around. Louisiana, this is the UK, some nice data here. You can see the first wave versus the second wave also showing that signature of the higher pressure initially, then the pressure drop and the second wave, not really the pressure jump at uh, for the start of the wave and then it drops off and then you see the trough of that wave as it passes by. This is um, Virginia Key, Briscane Bay, Florida. You can see the first wave and then the second wave moving through about 19 hours difference approximately. And did you hear the volcano erupting? Um, a lot of people in Anchorage apparently did places in Alaska almost 6,000 miles away and it was a pretty audible boom. You can hear some of that on Twitter. I was skeptical of this at first but after you hear the the audio of it, it's pretty apparent that's what happened. And here is the shock wave for Anchorage. You can see almost 19.3 hours, the first wave with that signature strong pressure rise and the second one with a lesser one. But still shows up pretty good for something that's traveled almost all the way around the planet. That's a very impressive signature. Here's the big weather maker for today out here on the East Coast. We had some severe weather, some tornadoes through Florida. A lot of good imagery coming out on Twitter for those tornadoes. Uh, very warm air being brought up and then there's the clash where the colder air meets and you're getting a lot of freezing rain, frozen precipitation and just plain old snow. We're getting cold air all the way down towards the Gulf Coast. Some 30s were showing up there this morning. You can see the, that cold air moving over the Gulf of Mexico there too. So that's the big weather maker for the lower 48 for the day. Here's our satellite imagery here. We're socked in here fog wise. A lot of the region you can see it in the Willamette Valley. You can see in eastern Washington, especially the valley areas. And I was hoping some of these high clouds would really give us a break from some of this fog, but it's not really looking like it's going to happen. So we might be kind of socked in again today. So first of all, let's take a look at this system that's moving down with some Arctic air east of the Rockies. It's going to bring a little bit of precipitation to the region. You can see the troughing mainly east of the Rockies out there, but you can see the precip start through western Washington, mostly in the higher terrain around the coast. It's going to be snow in most of the areas here um, except for the lowlands of western Washington. You can see this precipitation showing up in front of that Arctic high as it slides south and eventually will move out of the area. Let's check out some of the snowfall totals with this here too. So putting this into motion you can see some of the cascades getting snowfall here. You know a few inches maybe up to six inches some of the higher terrain there you can see some of idaho there too so i just wanted to have a heads up if you guys are traveling mm -hmm. out of washington eastbound through idaho on i-90 have heads up there for some snowfall potential there this really starting early tuesday morning for the cascade starts a little bit quicker on monday night and as some arctic air slides south of the uh, southeast on the east side of the rockies there 
So not too big of a deal, just a, just a heads up. So checking out Seattle, there is a dense fog advisory through most of the Puget Sound. Um, Bellingham doesn't look to be included in that, but it's definitely foggy out there. And let's see if they have a burnoff time or if it's supposed to come out at all. Visibility one quarter mile or less in dense fog. It, it, they put out the dense fog until noon today, but I think the fog is probably going to hang out much longer than that in some areas. So checking out Portland, you can see it too. They've got air quality alerts. You know, we get trapped in these valleys here and not a lot of mixing. So when we start getting stagnant air, air quality alert is out, dense fog advisories. And looking at the east side of the states here, you can see we've got freezing fog advisories where it's colder and then that moisture is just hanging around and it's freezing onto, you know, roadways. And it's not as bad as a freezing rain event. You're not going to get huge ice accumulations or anything like that. Just be careful of slick roadways or slick walkways when you're out and about. Checking out Spokane here too. They mentioned uh, Tuesday some light mountain snow. That's the system we looked at a little bit there. And if you can see the dense fog advisories and the freezing fog advisories, also also the air stagnation advisory. So, you know, heads up there. And new day, same story, more fog and ice. Kind of boring with these weather patterns sometimes as we get in here, but you got to go through this sometimes to get back to the active weather. So looking onto the extended here, this is the European. You can see that system sliding down that might bring some snow to the cascades and portions of the idaho panhandle in montana and that moves out and then look at this ridge just building up over us i mean this is this is rivaling the huge heat dome there in summer only we're going to be on the foggy cold side of this this time and you can see there's some weak systems riding along the top of this ridge here and they try to break it down but it's pretty persistent and then later in the area we start to get some activity there. This is on into late January. This would this would be interesting. So this is something to watch. Some of the signals are pointing to a change coming in late January, early February. So, you know, winter weather lovers here in the Pacific Northwest, something to get excited about a bit. You see the ridging setting up here. This is more of a snowy pattern developing for Western Washington, Western Oregon, British Columbia. So it's just something we get to watch here still too far out to start getting into any detail at all it's still fantasy land this can still change but again like we've been going through every day these models are kind of hinting at a change late january into early february let's check out the gfs ensemble here too here goes the system sliding down east of the rockies here then the ridging builds in and you see it becomes quite strong there and shunting any weather systems away from our area look at that just dominates our weather for a while Eventually, that ridge starts to weaken. Let's see what happens here in the extended. Let's get into the late January here. And you see the ridging start to develop out here in the Pacific. This is a better chance for some kind of troughing to develop. It doesn't take much troughing. It can be very subtle. And we don't need, you know, some Arctic air moves over there. And you get very subtle troughing. And you can get snow events here in western Washington. As long as you have that ridging directing that flow out of the north for us. So a little bit of a signal there too. But not as much as the European here is the european ensemble for the pacific north american oscillation i've talked about this before if you're in positive territory means usually more troughing out over the gulf of alaska and if you go into negative territory here that usually means more ridging out over the gulf of alaska which tends to give us our cooler weather so you can see the european hinting at that pattern change later into january into early february so it's just something to watch at this point but it gives snow lovers something to look forward to potentially, or maybe maybe it'll spawn a windstorm, or you know maybe it'll just get us some active weather, or at least clean the air out, bring some wind in here, and get this stagnant air out of here. So hopefully you guys are liking these videos. Keep clicking like, subscribe if you want to help support the page. Click on the join membership there, and the instructions will follow. And I will talk to you guys later.